everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you in Exodus. And as we jump into, no pun intended, because the plague of frogs, just kidding. We're right before that in chapter 7, and we're going to take on the plagues and being able to see what they truly mean. Now, where have we been is really important. Uh, where we've been is who's in charge. There's your quiz, right? God's in charge. Um, and Pharaoh's trying to stick his head in and being able to say, I'm, I'm in authority. I'm in charge. And Moses being able to be that mouthpiece with faltering lips. So Aaron is now the prophet of God to the people, uh, but through Moses, the intercessor um, to God and the people. So within that, uh, we get to see Moses and Aaron approach Pharaoh. And he's saying, I'm not letting your people go. He's gonna, uh, God's going to harden his heart so that... The judgment of God so that they can see who God is and see who's in control. And that's why we jump right into verse 14 of chapter 7 in Exodus, speaking of that first plague. Now there's going to be 10 plagues. I'm going to set this off. I'm going to steal the thunder of all the rest of the plagues is this. These aren't just calamities that happen that God brings about to show that he has power. That's true. But these plagues are put in place so that God would be actually be professing that he is God and no other gods have control or more power than him. Every single plague is directed at a God of Egypt. There is gods and goddesses that they believe. They were this polytheistic culture that if you wanted um, a child in childbearing, um, you would go to this goddess, Hecht. And we're going to talk about that today in chapter 8. If you would uh, want to have this provision of your land that ha- comes from the Nile, you would go to Hapi, uh, which is the god of the Nile. And so within every single plague, I'm just going to be naming them. I just named both of them that we're going to talk to today. We're going to go through two plagues a day. And as we walk t- towards them, you're going to see the power and the authority that God exerts over the God's of Egypt. It's a battleground. That's what this plague is all about. That's what these plagues are all about. Finally, to the end part, he already promised there's going to be a thing, there's going to be a plague, there's going to be a time where he will let the people go because there is going to be no more authority that he's going to be able to keep the people of Israel in Egypt because it's going to be so blatantly clear who God is and the authority that he has and what he's going to do for his people. So let's begin with the first plague. It's in chapter 7, verse 14, and it says this. Then the Lord said to Moses, now this is uh, the plague of blood, um, and we're going to talk about the God of the Nile, Hopi. So this is God aiming at Hopi and saying, I have power over you. So then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is unyielding. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning as he goes out to the water. Wait on the bank of the Nile to meet him and take in your hand the staff that was changed into a snake. Then say to him, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has sent me to say to you, let my people go so that they may worship me in the desert. But until now, you have not listened. This is what the Lord says. By this, you will know that I am the Lord. With the staff that is in my hand, I will strike the water of the Nile and it will be changed into blood. The fish in the Nile will die and the river will stink. The Egyptians will not be able to drink its water. The Nile is seen in Egypt as a life source. And so it it talks about, yes, with the fish, talks about how it aggregates um, out out into the, the fields as well. It gives water for the people and for the land. And so as it says here, they won't be able to actually use it for what it's there purposed for. Verse 19, it says, The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over the streams and canals, over the ponds and all the reservoirs, and they will turn into blood. Blood will be everywhere in Egypt, even in the wooden buckets and stone jars that they had already drawn from the water. So Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord had commanded. He raised his staff in the presence of Pharaoh and his officials and struck the water of the Nile, and all the water was changed into blood. The fish in the Nile died, and the river smelled so bad that the Egyptians could not drink its water. Blood was everywhere in Egypt. But the Egyptian magicians did the same things by their secret arts, and Pharaoh's heart became hard. He would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said. Instead, he turned and went into his palace and did not take even this to heart. And all the Egyptians dug along the Nile to get drinking water because they could not drink the water of the river. So there was more oppression, there is more work that's getting done outside the Nile because the Lord struck it into blood 
Yes, all of a sudden they've amplified that with their magicians. If you can say, well, we can do that too. Let's let's uh, oppress our people more with changing more water into to blood. Um, and being able to say, what we understand here is that uh, these plagues weren't just like this one and done. It's not, oh, blood for 24 hours and then it's done. This has effects of being able to say the fish would die. How would they be born again? Right? How would they actually relive in and amongst that Nile? We don't get that uh, answer, uh, but we do know that it has lasting effects. And actually that it's annulled, that, that people have spoken about it in history, about Exodus, about Egypt and what happened in some of these plagues throughout their history. So let's go to the next one. God aimed at Hapi, the god of the Nile. Now he's going to aim at the goddess Hecht. Hecht is um, this, uh, I have it down in my notes here, uh, this goddess who assisted women in childbirth, right? So not the life source of the Nile, but now the life source within the women. And uh, this was a frog-like goddess. That's why uh, the picture of Hecht is a frog. Um, And so seven days passed, after the Lord struck the Nile. This is verse 25 of chapter 7, now ver- chapter 8, verse 1. So seven days, so it's a week long. That it, Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, This is what the Lord says, Let my people go, so that they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go, I will plague your whole country with frogs. The Nile will teem with frogs. They will come up into your palace and your bedroom and onto your bed, into the houses of your officials and on your own people, and into your ovens and kneading troughs. The frogs will go up on you and your people and all your officials. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, stretch out your hand with your staff over the streams and canals and ponds and make frogs come up out of the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt and the frogs came up and covered the land. But the magicians did the same things by their secret arts. They also made frogs come up out of the land of Egypt. And you might be thinking, how are they doing this? This is that magic arts. This is actually this um, false religion, this false kind of, uh, we would say false, but these things are happening. But I always want to remind you of being able to say, they're just doing it to be able to actually try to match the power or match um, the, the, the magic um, within this, that they're thinking that this is magic. Um, they're going to match it, but they're doing it to the detriment of their country. Isn't that interesting? Right? They're not doing it to show anything except their own power, but not for long. They match certain things in these first couple plagues, but then they can't match anymore. Verse 8, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Pray to the Lord to the, take the frogs away from me and my people, and I will let your people go to offer sacrifices to the Lord. Moses said to Pharaoh, I leave to you the honor of setting the time for me to pray for you and your officials and your people that you and your houses may be rid of the frogs, except for those that remain in the Nile. Tomorrow, Pharaoh said. Moses replied, it will be as you say, so that you may know there is no one like the Lord our God. You can bring more frogs and oppress your people more, but you can't take them away. Only God can do that. So, After Moses and Aaron left Pharaoh, Moses cried out to the Lord about the frogs and he had brought on Pharaoh. And the Lord did what Moses asked. The frogs died in the houses, in the courtyards, and in the fields. They were piled into heaps and the land reeked of them. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart and would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said. The recycling of that understanding. There's going to be a hardening of heart. There's going to be uh, a cycle of sin over and over again. Authority doesn't want to lose authority. Pharaoh doesn't. And so he's saying, oh, not so bad. Okay, we can deal with the smell of death um, of the Nile, but also the frogs and they're heaped out. Oh, something's taken care of. I'm still an authority. And God will chip away plague by plague to show him that God is the God that he should worship. That God, that I am the Lord your only God. So we get to see the power of God. We get to see the power of magic, sure, um, and uh, also being aware of that, nothing to mess with, uh, but being able to know that the power that will continue on is going to be the authority and, frankly, the lordship of God. So you have something in front of you this day. You have something that's tough in a battle this day. Uh, Maybe you read chapter 7 and 8 in these first two plagues and be able to say, God is most powerful. Have a powerful day knowing that the powerful God walks with you.